entry Friday evening. job is going fine. I was able to wrap up my first major project on time and under budget. But then that's not too surprising. After all, the sequence of an engineering project is orderly. One only needs to acquire all the pertinent information, construct a proper plan, and then execute it. So everything is going fine except that it's Friday night. And I've reached the stage in my life where I know that it's time to settle down for good. I'm single again, and there's no longer any reason why I should be. It's been long enough. In my view diary, all aspects of life should be orderly and pre-planned. The process of finding a mate is no different. In order to succeed, one should only need to acquire the necessary information plan a course of action, and then make it happen. It's the same as any other engineering problem. There's a rational approach to take, so that's what I'll do. Finding the right mate is important. Only a perfect match will do. I'll figure out her precise requirements tonight, making sure we'll have plenty in common. And then tomorrow, I'll set out to round up all the information I'll need to make my plan.
Elise. Hey, it's Cassie. What are you doing? Oh, I just got back from yoga. What's going on? Mm, nothing. I just wanted to talk. <sighs> I was thinking about where to go to to meet my perfect match. It seems like I have been to every place west of Denver and nothing has worked out. Well, what's wrong? Haven't you found any decent places? Hmm, no. I don't know if it's the places or if it's just me. Yeah, but you're lucky. You met Jack by sheer chance at that resort. What if luck never comes my way? There are ways to stack the odds in your favor, you know. Like with charms. Do you still have that family heirloom you once mentioned? The wishing jade? Yeah, I still have it. I think it's in the box from my grandmother. Well, maybe it's time to give it a try, Cassie. Really? But each descendant is only supposed to get one wish. Do you think it would work for something like this? I don't see why not. The other day I was reading an article in New Age magazine about energy focusing. Hmm. The one written by Shirley MacLaine? No, the one written by someone who had been an ancestor of Shirley MacLaine in a previous incarnation. Or was it one of the descendants of Shirley MacLaine's previous ancestors? Well, what did the article say? The article said there are these frequencies or something that connect all the generations in a family and they can be focused through the right family heirlooms. Hmm. Did it say how to do the focusing? Um, let me try to remember. I think it said you have to make a rhyme that's especially personal to you and then concentrate as you say it over the heirloom. Great. Well, fantastic. I think I'm going to try it right now. All right. Bye for now. Jade Oval, before tonight, send me my Mr. Wright. Oh, and make him tall or don't send him at all. Are you my Mr. Right? Are you my Mr. Right? Oh, please be tall. Are you Mr. Wright?
Yes. Great. You can pull up next to my cabin. I'm Cassiopeia, but everyone calls me Cassie. Don. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Come on, let me show you around. My property starts here, goes to the next bend, and it extends about a half mile beyond the road past the Timberline. And this, this is my cabin. My father built it before he met my mom, and my mom never really liked it very much, so they pretty much gave the property to me. I was just admiring the dome structure from the road. Oh, do you like it? Yes. Very much. It must be able to support a lot of weight because I'm sure that you get a lot of snow up here during the winter months. Do you know how much it can support? Um, I don't know. The snow kind of just builds up to a certain point and then comes frumpling off the roof. How's that? Frumpling? <laughs> well, that's how I like to think of it. Come on, oh. I'll show you inside. Kind of rustic up here. No running water. Only a wood stove for heat. All these pictures. You're an artist. I mostly do portraits, but recently I just started doing some landscaping. Amazing. You really have talent. I recognize most of these images. The X-Files, Buffy, Xena, Luke and Leia. Yeah, the sci-fi fantasy is my favorite. Mine too. So we have that in common. Mm -hmm. Now what about that animal there? Is that a marten or a fisher? <laughs> that one, uh, I'm not really sure. One morning I just woke up and I had pictured this small mammal in mind and painted it on the canvas. I'm not even really sure there's an animal like that. Well, these are all very impressive, but Yes? Well, there's some kind of strange effect. Is that good or bad? I don't know if I'd say good or bad. I just can't quite put my finger on it. Hmm. Uh, I call it envisionment. I choose to apply my own envisionment to the images my eyes have seen. Oh, I see. But then the scenes aren't an accurate depiction of the true images. Wouldn't it have been easier just to have used photography? Probably, but that's not exactly what I was trying to do. I use the faces in the mountains for inspiration, and I look at the subject for a little while, and then I close my eyes, I picture the subject, and then I take the image from my mind and put that onto the canvas. Really? What for? There's no real reason. It's just a form of expression that comes naturally to me. I had just brewed some tea. Would you like some? Yes, thank you. This is from a company that imports from India. The tea leaves are grown from a natural variety. You mean from a kind that hasn't been genetically engineered? Mm-hmm. I try and buy natural foods wherever I can. It's getting harder and harder these days, though. Well, sure. That's because the Gen N foods do have their advantages. Better nutrition, better resistance to disease. But how do we really know what those Franken foods will do to us years from now? It's kind of scary. Well, the scientists have screened out all the possible harmful effects. They only release the products that check out as safe. Hmm. You have such confidence in them. I'm one of them. An engineer, I mean, not actually a scientist. Really? What kind of engineering do you do? Well, my education is in chemical engineering. I work in advanced ceramic composite materials. Oh, ceramics. You mean like pottery. I took a class in that once. Oh, it was so much fun. Uh... Sort of like that, in the sense that the process of forming hard materials from elasticized precursors is the same. Hmm. You sound so objective. You express things very concisely. 
Well, yes, I suppose that's me. Hmm. I'm more artistic. I like to express myself through feelings and impressions in my artwork. I don't think I've ever indulged in any kind of art. Hmm. Yeah, you have. What about that CD in your car? The Royal CD? Mm -hmm. That's music. Well, yes, music is art. It is? I never thought of music as art. Mm -hmm. And the guy that made that CD is a local. He's playing at a coffee shop I know of tonight. No kidding. Mm -hmm. We could be there in an hour or so if you'd like to go. Tonight, you mean? Yes. Why? What is it? Well, it's just that I thought for going to town... Mm-hmm. You're embarrassed by the way I'm dressed, aren't you? No, not embarrassed. Just a little uncomfortable. Yeah, we'll get over it. I mean, look at you. You're wearing a shirt and tie out here in the backwoods. Come on. We'll have fun. Let's go. There is wisdom in the rocks that you have ever known. Horizons that we cannot see, skies we've never flown. You tried to tell them of a light your soul could not resist. Impossible for them to think it ever could exist. Gather long now, Rusty, it's time to go. The shaft is all played out, in a month there'll be snow. And Rusty's down by the river, gazing at the sky. He knows, knows it's time, time to leave, leave but he don't, don't know why. why. diary, it was the strangest thing, this trip into the mountains. I met this young lady named Cassie. We spent the whole late afternoon and evening together. We had fun and the time just flew by. I'm attracted to her, but I can't explain why. We don't seem to have very much in common. She doesn't seem to have any appreciation for science or technology. She's so unconventional. And how did I end up at her place anyway? It certainly wasn't my intention to drive up into the mountains when I set out on Saturday. Now that I think back on it, she seemed to be expecting me. Me, specifically. How could that be? I don't understand this, but there's no denying it, Diary. She's been on my mind ever since I've been back.
right then, Saturday, around 3 o'clock? Why? Cassie, you know, I wasn't sure if I should call. We just sort of met by random chance, and then we ended up spending the whole evening together. Hmm. It wasn't exactly random. I kind of arranged for you to come and meet me. How could you think that you did that? Well, because you came on the same day that I made a wish on the jade heirloom passed down by my grandmother. <laughs> you wished on a piece of jade, and you thought that was what brought me here? Well, it's not just a piece of jade. It has powers, you just have to believe in them. Rocks and stones don't have powers. They obey the laws of physics. I know this because I work in ceramic materials. Their structures and compositions are well known. Well, yeah, maybe for your materials because they're made artificially. But this one is a real gemstone. We can duplicate whatever nature makes. Take sapphires, for example. Start out with some pure aluminum oxide, mix in some trace metals for color, fire it carefully in a kiln, and you'll have a sapphire or any other kind of gemstone just the same as nature made. Mm -mm. No, that can't be true. Gemstones are supposed to be special. Such a strange world you live in. You know, I have my way of thinking. It's my way, but in my view, your world is strange. How is my world strange? Well, for example, everything that you do is for some plain, functional purpose. I mean, you make ceramic products, but for industrial applications. You don't express yourself through any kind of art, and your image, it's really square. I mean, you're in a shirt and a tie every day. It's like you're living for the business world. A pair of jeans would be a drastic change for you. I mean, I know I could make some changes. Hey, this is who I am. Who needs to change? You just, you, you change whatever you need to to express yourself. Even your name, if you want to. My name? It's been fine till now. My legal name is Don Wright. I've never thought about changing it. Wright? With a W? Yes. So your legal name isn't Cassiopeia? Uh, not exactly. Um, it's actually Cassandra. Cassandra May. I hardly know what to think about you. Well, you could try to open up and relate to my way of thinking. It's an unconventional way. An unconventional life. But for now, I've got a long drive ahead of me. We should say good night. Oh, of course. It is two hours to Denver. It's so far. It's probably too far. Too far? Don't you know how far a man will go for a woman? You say that as though there's a certain particular distance. There is. And in all of history, only a couple of dozen guys have ever gone farther. What? How can there be a certain particular distance for some guys, and then a different one for other guys that go further? If you want to know, try thinking like an engineer. In other words, try entering my world.
Ch Hey, Elise, it's me. Hey, listen, I need to ask you a question. Do you know how far a man would travel to see a woman? Uh, the typical man? I suppose he would drive for a couple hours, maybe a hundred miles. A hundred miles? That's it? Yes, isn't that about how far it is from Denver to your cabin? Uh, no, I think it's more than that, but Still, I thought it would at least been like a thousand miles. I mean, didn't Jack drive all the way up here from Texas to see you? That, that's got to be at least a thousand miles. I don't know. I think so. But did this guy of yours imply that there was some specific distance that a man would go? I mean, how could there be one certain distance for all men? That's what I said. But no, Don was sure that there was a certain distance. You know, he had even said something that... Some guys go further or something like that. You know, I, I think he wants me to figure this out, but it, it doesn't make any sense to me. He told me to think like an engineer, so does that mean I should be thinking of the distance in kilometers? My brother's an engineer. He might know. Oh, could you call him for me? Ooh, that, that's kind of remote. All right, great. Yeah, send an email to his pager gadget and I'll wait. Elise, this guy drives me crazy. I mean, I felt that special something when we first met, and all the time that we've spent together has been fantastic. But he is so different from me. You know, I was sure he was my Mr. Wright. He even said he was. And then I found out his last name is Wright, with a W. I mean, this could all be just a huge comedy of errors. But there are plenty of people named Wright. That doesn't change the premise. It doesn't? So, you think the wish could be working after all? He responded already? What kind of error message? It means that all he can send are numbers, no text. So all I'm getting is the number 12,500. Are you sure? 12,500? Is that supposed to be in miles, kilometers, paces, or, or what? I don't get it. But what if this is just his way of saying that it's too far for him to come up here and see me? I mean, Elise, what am I going to do? Diary, I'm trying to understand this creature, yet she defies understanding. Her thoughts seem to be inspired by sheer emotion rather than by reason. Her motivations appear to be based on being different from every existing conventional behavior. It's as though the two of us live in universes that are skewed to each other.
Somehow, I've got to figure her out. So far, no reasonable template that I've used has worked. Therefore, by deduction, I must try some kind of unreasonable approach. She sees the world through art, which is merely... Uh, I guess I really don't know. So, I'll research it. I will study the basis of art and its history. That might give me some kind of insight. So I have your answer. It's 12,500 miles. I mean, yes. Correct. You figured it out. Excellent. Well, actually, no. My girlfriend's brother is an engineer, and she kind of called him for me. But I still don't understand why it should be 12,500 miles. Because that's as far as two people can be apart on a planet that's 25,000 miles around. Oh. But then what was that thing that you said about some guys have to go further? 
24 Apollo astronauts decades ago came back all the way from the moon, about a quarter of a million miles. But even if you were a billion miles away, we would still find a way to get to you. I would. <laughs>